Hi everybody, it's me, the tree. Um, I want to thank all you guys um, that have been writing me, all your support and everything. I really appreciate it. And uh, it really means a lot to me. There's uh, quite a few people writing me now, um, backing me on this, and women who want to be Earth Mothers also, that are totally down for working for the cause, um, which is totally awesome. I'm really happy about that. Um, anyhow, a lot of people have been asking questions about the reptilians and how you can see them. And, um, you know, basically, if we could get my Master Mason to cooperate, then we can channel Pendar through him. Because Pendar, even though he's in the fourth dimension, he's still, I've been able to channel him through my Master Mason. I received a letter from him before I went to Bohemian Grove, but I didn't read it because I thought he was so mad at me, because he was, for using his name. He's the one who's a member of the Hillbillies camp at Bohemian Grove, and uh, the one who Drake and the reptilian inhabited, and the one who, um, when Pendar would come communicate with me, he would use his body. And uh, anyhow, the letter said that he wished me the best of luck at Bohemian Grove, and said that he would meet me, that he, well, would meet me at his office, um, and I didn't read the letter until last night, and so I guess I kind of missed out on that, but I'm still going to contact him, and hopefully, you know, we can get him to cooperate with us, because basically, he, he is afraid of Queen Elizabeth, and he's still in the orders, and he's still, um, you know, subservient to them, and plus, you know, he has been tortured and has been hurt before by um, the queen because of me, uh, because he chose to protect me rather than do what he was assigned to do. Uh, but anyhow, he has the compatible aura and he is the one who I know for a fact uh, can inhabit the reptilian, the Sangarian, and so, uh, but see, Pendar, since he's the human host that he lived and died, he, the last few times that I've talked to him through my Master Mason, I was like for a couple minutes, and then it got down to where it was just a couple seconds, and I couldn't even hear what he was saying towards the end. Um, but I know I could still get him back. He, he told me that it's really cold there, and that it's really dark. And um, a lot of you were writing me letters about the... Uh, Reptilian saying that it's okay. It's okay. Where's your other one? Huh? Where's your other one? My other dog? Pause. <laughs> Baby guy. Go. Okay. So anyways, a lot of you are writing letters and making comments and stuff about how the reptilians should be just wiped out and that, you know, we should destroy them all and just let them go. You know, and a lot of hate projected towards them. And um, they are not all of one mind. They are not all the same. And they do, they are beginning to. They are. You go. The dogs. All right. So um, the reptilians, they are starting to develop human emotions and mercy and empathy. And um, most of them want to do the right thing and they want to coexist here with us and but one thing they're afraid because okay if they were to appear here in their reptilian form which they've tried to do throughout time they've been hurt they've been killed they, they almost became extinct you know throughout time you know if you look back in history you can see that they did try to surface in their own skins and we the humans wouldn't allow them to um, be here on earth looking the way they did and we made them feel ugly and that's one thing about the reptilians is they feel ugly they think that they're ugly and they think that we would be afraid of them or that we would run away because they think they're ugly but I think they're beautiful um, and most of the, the Sangarians are are willing to, you know, to love and to coexist with us here and to be, you know, good people. And they don't want to do what they've been doing. They don't want, 
they don't want to do what they've been doing, but they're afraid. They're so afraid of Queen Elizabeth because she is the leader of the Illuminati and they're under her secret societies. And if they love anybody more than her or anything, then they are tortured so bad. You would not believe like what happened to my master Mason and Drake and literally being hung on a cross, being sodomized, electrocuted, you know, shit shoved down their throat. Um, you know, hung on a cross, you know, just terrible things. They're tortured so bad. And also, um, they uh, can be removed from the human host if they don't obey, and then they get trapped in the fourth dimension where Pendar is. But two reptilians have died to protect me, okay? And no human has done that. And some of the humans, you know, are writing saying, you know, they've done all this evil to us, you know, and they've hurt the world and that we should just, you know, um, let them go or let them, let them die or not help them or, or, or try to destroy them. And that's wrong because there is not anything that a reptilian or a Sangarian has done that a human hasn't done. Okay? I mean, <laughs> the humans are definitely not humane these days. As a matter of fact, most humans don't give a shit about anybody except themselves. Not all, but most, I have found. Um, <clears throat> you know, so, so to just write them off like, you know, they're all bad or they're all evil, that's wrong. It, it's, it's wrong and we can't do that. And I will protect them with my life, just like I will protect the humans with my life. Um, anyhow, so yes, there is a possibility for us to um, get Pendar back, who was the leader of the Illuminati. He was the only one above Queen Elizabeth. He was the um, snake in Genesis. The whole thing about Genesis and Eve and the snake was that she um, re um, reproduced with the reptilian. And she was told not to do that, she did it anyway. So that was like a big sin. Um, Anyhow, so like I said, they have their memory, all the Sangarians have their memories intact for thousands and thousands of years. So they know who we were in past lives, and they uh, they have the memories of what really happened, the truth. Anyhow, I wanted to tell you real quick, um, I went to the Hells Angels Clubhouse the other night, and I was dressed up in my um, Earth Mother outfit, one of them. Anyhow, it uh, one of the Hells Angels had just pulled in in a truck. I mean, I'm talking about the Hells Angels Clubhouse here in Las Vegas. And one of the Hells Angels had just pulled up in his truck, was bringing food back, and I stood back, you know, about, I don't know, about 50 feet away, you know, and I had my robe like this, you know, and I was going like this, and he was looking at me, and he was trying to get in the gate, you know, and he got all kind of nervous, he couldn't get the key in. And I just stood there, you know, like this. And I had a black dress on and a, a yellow cloak, and, so he got on his cell phone and he called another Hells Angel inside the clubhouse and he had him come out, you know, and then I walked up on him and they're like, are you all right? I'm like, yes, I'm all right. I'm the tree. I'm tree. And like, oh, okay. You're a tree. And I explained to them that the world needs their help, that they're angels and we're in hell and we need their help. And I told them how much I loved them and um, they let me hug them. <laughs> well, one of them did. Um, the other one was behind the gate. But um, they liked my costume, they liked my outfit and stuff, and um, they were very polite to me and very friendly, and I was just telling them how much I loved them and how much the earth needs them, and if they would just drop out of the Illuminati and stop doing what they're doing, um, because when the Hells Angels got their other death head, you know, their other wing, is when they joined up under the Illuminati. And I'm sure when Troy did that, he didn't realize who the leader of the Illuminati was. Well, it was Pendar at the time, but still it was Queen Elizabeth who, um, you know, pretty much, you know, brought them in and had control over the situation. <clears throat> and now she has total control. But anyways, though, when I drove away and stuff, you know, when I was leaving, you know, the two Hells Angels, they were waving at me and they were going, peace, like this to me. <laughs> and that was a really good thing. That was, like, such a good thing because... A lot of the Hells Angels hate me and they, they think that I'm the enemy and I'm not the enemy. I'm just begging them to help us because Troy Regas owns the Hells Angels Corporation and also is running the corporation or the, the, the Confederation of Clubs. So he basically has the power over every biker in the world. And if he stays in the Illuminati and keeps doing what 
you know, Elizabeth tells them to do, then it's going to be bad for all of us, trust me. It's going to take us all down, the entire world. Um, I could go into detail more about that, but I won't, because <clears throat> I told Troy I would stop picking on him for a while. <laughs> We're good. Uh, anyhow, I, I love you guys so much, and I don't really know what to do next. All I know is that I can't stop. I can't stop now. I won't stop now. And I have to think of something creative and something colorful and something bold and something spontaneous and something unexpected and unusual and weird or whatever to do in order to, you know, stir things up a little bit because that's what I do. I guess I stir the pot. Um, <laughs> anyhow, peace and love, you guys. I'll see you soon, okay?